Hey, I'm John. Welcome to Mr. G's Workbench. Today we're going to get together and we're going to do a build review of a relatively new kit. It's Kinetics Gold Boxing of their new F16C. Uh, they also have an F16A uh, boxing. It's the same, uh, it's the same parts. Uh, it's just different directions and you use some different parts. So, uh, originally I was actually thinking I was going to go rogue. I was going to do it as an A. I've got the decals to do uh, a Texas Air Guard A. But there's, there's Texas uh, Air Guard decals that come in the C boxing. They're made by Cartograph. They were designed by Fighter Town. Why waste those decals? And it's marked for Houston, which is right near where I live. So we're going to build this straight out of the box. No additions. We're going to do it as a Texas Air Guard jet. And uh, it, this build is being brought to you by my channel member family. Uh, their generous contributions uh, are funding this kit. So thank you guys. That's their names right there. If you're interested in supporting the channel by becoming a channel member, if you go to the bottom of the page, you'll see a join button. Uh, just hit the join button. It's $1.99 a month. Uh, so little to give so much to so many. So uh, again, thank you very much guys for your generosity and it's paying off in spades with this build review. So let's dive right into it and uh, let's see what, what Kinetic has given us this time around. Take a quick look in here. Uh, this ain't gonna be an inbox review. You guys know I very rarely do anything like an inbox. Take a quick look at this. Uh, decals look good. Printed by Cartograph, so you get uh, weapon stencils. Uh, just like the last boxing of the F-16 that Kinetic did, they give you plenty of weapons and stuff. Give you a, a, nice, a nice decal sheet here with markings for Ohio, Minnesota, and Texas. The instruction manual, it's a little bit better than old Kinetic. Um, I did build one of their old F-16s way back in the day. And yeah, the plastic texture was terrible. Uh, there were a lot of issues with that kit. You got one box with the clear parts. And I'm not going to take that out right now. We'll take a look at that later. Everything else is pretty straightforward. Centerline fuel tank, I believe. The nose. And, and that's it. Uh, two runners with uh, armament. And you'll notice I already, I took the harms that were on here. There were some AGM 88s on there. Those have gone to another project. Uh, there's plenty of stuff on here. Bombs, missiles, you name it, it's there. And you've got two runners with the same parts. This is all the stuff that's obviously left and right. Fuel tanks, pylons, stabilators. Uh, there's two seats, uh, which will come in handy for their D model that's coming out. And then you've got this one with uh, various uh, laser devices. Let's take a good look at this. So this is the new uh, forward upper fuselage for the, the single seater. Uh, the only thing I don't understand is they molded these uh, bird slicer antennas on. Uh, there are versions of this that don't use it. I went back and looked at their A instructions where they tell you to shave them off. Uh, could have saved them and us a lot of grief by just molding this this piece right here as separate and you could have had one with the antennas, one without. I believe these uh, antennas here are referred to as donkey dick antennas. Uh, if you're doing old model, an a, you know, an, an A model, I know in the A instructions they tell you to cut those off. And again, and you got to sand down the, the ridges that are left. The cockpit is also on here. And uh, it's got some nice detail to it. I'm very happy with that. Uh, I'm going to put the decals right over it and hope they settle down nice into there. Then you've got the inner uh, canopy frame and you've got the rear of the cockpit here. The, the molding here is really fine. It's refined 
It's very light. Uh, I think that'll look good under under a wash. Uh, we'll we'll find out, won't we? You've got a uh, a runner with the pedals for the engine. Uh, I believe this is strictly the Pratt & Whitney engine version, not the GE version. If I have my F-16s right, I'm not a connoisseur, so to speak. Uh, you got your engine stuff is here, your intakes, it's, I believe that's referred to as a small intake. You got two different size landing gears depending on what block you do. Again, if it wasn't for the instructions, I wouldn't know what block I was building. Same thing here, you got the lower fuselage in here. There's two different uh, there's two different parts for the upper the spine area behind the cockpit. Uh, one of them you're using on the A model. The other is for the the later C model. Wait, we've got the assembled uh, cockpit here, and there's no uh, there's no 3D panels or anything like that for this yet. So we're using the kit decals. I'm gonna apply some microsol. We'll start right here. We left the decals overnight. After another coat of uh, Solvacet, the decals have set down great right uh, over the uh, raised detail in the cockpit. After I weather this a little bit, we'll get some uh, satin finish on there to level everything out. I used a little bit of uh, Tamiya black uh, panel liner in the vents in the back. And here's the instrument panel. The only thing I'm going to do is, since we're here right now, those those multifunction displays are a little bright, so I'm going to take some Tamiya smoke and just put a drop of that into each display. I used uh, Mr. Cement S on this because it seems to have a little more oomph to it sometimes as opposed to Tamiya Extra Thin. I applied it on the insides of, of both sides of this intake and I'll tell you right now it pretty much covered up most of that seam. Uh, job well done to Kinetic. Uh, I'm very impressed with uh, with the way this came together. Those, this is the rear half of the intake. They're going to have you put the turbine face on it. Oh, Kinetic, you were doing so well. Uh, this was a, an obnoxious area to, to assemble. All right, Kinetic has you put these, the front and back walls of the uh, main gear bay in, along with these parts, F9 and D54. Then you're gonna put in these two pieces here, the box, and I think that's an oxygen bottle. Uh, the locating is vague. Like here, this box, it just points to this area here, but what part here? The back here. 
of this box and then it overhangs like that. And then this bottle overhangs like that according to their diagram. Before we assemble the completed uh, lower fuselage onto the upper components, I'm going to give the gear bays a quick uh, black wash. I'm going to use black oil paint that I've been letting wick off some of the excess linseed oil onto this cardboard. Let me just take a little of this. Let's get this. I've gone ahead here and completed the cockpit. I've installed the uh, instrument panel. The sticks I, I installed before I painted because for me I just find it easier. And you can see how those uh, kit decals from Cartograph set down over the raised details. I'm very happy with that. Now we just easily install this in here. I've test fit this a bunch of times. And then oh, I also painted the inside of this, obviously the cockpit color went in and hit it with some Tamiya black panel liner to create shadows there. And there's the completed cockpit. If I get that just so, you can barely see inside there. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat that too much if you're concerned that you're going to make it look like ass or something. The other thing you had to do, they had you install a, a panel in this spot. So I installed the panel, I put some putty in, I thought better of it later and put CA around it, sanded it. I think that'll be pretty good under a coat of paint. If it's not, I'll go back and sand it again. That's all there is to do here. And next we're going to start working on the lower fuselage. Alright, next sub-assembly is the exhaust. I painted this flat white, then I came back in and did uh, exhaust streaking with flat black. I did it where the edges are going to be to kind of help to hide the seams, which you're not really going to hide.
The only issue back here on this uh, tail and uh, rudder assembly, this whole thing back here, I had to apply a little putty here, here, and here. Same thing on the other side, here, here, and then along where these pieces meet here. This is a separate cap. This is a separate piece in here. The stabilators fit into holes in the sides of the fuselage, which also helps to hide the seams here and here, uh, where the top and bottom come together, along with these uh, brakes back here. The wings, you have this section fits into these pieces, which are going to meet up with, uh, you know, which are part of this. So you wind up with putty here and here. There was no amount of fiddling I was going to do that was going to get these pieces any closer to closing this gap up on either side. Same thing along each side here. But again, once you turn this over and it's sitting with, on its gear with pylons and weapons, I, I really think it's irrelevant. <laughs> main fuselage is assembled. I assembled and painted it because you know what it looks like to put stuff together. Uh, the color I use to paint the uh, fuselage is half glass gray from uh, AK. This is RC245 from the real colors. This is supposed to approximate uh, 36170, the dark gray that uh, some of the planes were painted. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Every, I, I read an article in, uh, there's a thread in uh, Aircraft Resource Center talking about 36170. Uh, depending on whose paint you get, it looks different. The nose is painted gunship gray. The ECM blisters and the antenna here on the front, they're painted with, uh, 36375. You know what? It is what it is. The All of the uh, pods, pylons uh, on the plane, regardless of this color, are 36375. That's uh, apparently they didn't repaint all those pylons. That was just the way it was. The gear bays fit really well. They all went in nicely. Uh, these fins on the back here, they slotted in really well. The intake mouth is painted with uh, gunship gray and the, I'll tell you the truth, pretty hassle free for the intake. It went together well, it fit well, and the intake mouth slotted in really nicely. The little bit of gap that you get here, that's on me. I, I did my best to get everything lined up. Minimal uh, putty anywhere on the fuselage. So that's going to do it for the F-16 build. Uh, I apologize for some of the later stuff not being uh, recorded. My, my bad. I was trying to get this done. And uh, it's a nice kit. And I figure we'll take, let me take a couple of minutes. We'll take a look at it up close and I'll explain to you what, uh, what few problems there were for me with this kit compared to the old Kinetic F-16. So we'll start with the negative stuff. Uh, not a lot. The for me the low point in this kit is the uh, I hate to sound petty, but it's the AIM-9 missiles. They are in three pieces, and you have to get them lined up. The locating for them isn't overly positive. They didn't have to be that complicated. Why couldn't they mold them as one piece? I think it was because they were trying to use them for different versions of an AIM-9. The uh, AIM 120s went together well. They were two halves. Uh, they were a lot easier to put together. I was very happy with those. Uh, the only other negative for me is the directions. Uh, Kinetic does pretty bad directions in all their kits. The instructions for the assembling main landing gear legs uh, made no sense at all. Uh, they had one of the legs that's on the main gear 
they show it with a peg. It doesn't have any pegs. Uh, the only other thing, I use the ANALQ184 jamming pod on the center line, uh, as I've seen in some reference pictures. In the instructions, they give you decal placement for it, but there's no decals on the decal sheet for it. I just, I put a couple of decals off the weapons decal sheet just to fill it up a little. All that being said, let me give you all the positives. All the things that are an improvement over the old kinetic kit. The first being the exhaust. It's, it's a five piece exhaust, but the pieces go together so well, you can't mess it up. Uh, you don't see any seams when you're done. It slots right into the, the rest of the engine. The uh, cockpit for a, a kit cockpit goes together well. The decals, I use the kit decals. They went over the raised detail well and settled in. All the decals are printed by Cartograph. I was very happy with them. I had no issues with them. The instrument panel combing looks terrific. Uh, I used the, the kit seat. I built it completely out of the box. I guess the other negative would be there's no seat belts for the uh, ejection seat, which, I mean, at, even Tamiya gives you a decal for seat belts. So I think they could have did something with that. The fit of all the parts of the plane itself is terrific. I found the fit of the intake parts was really good. It looks terrific when it's done. I am terrible with intakes and to me, I was even happy with the way this one came out. The only other fit issue I had was around the nose. There's separate pieces you have to put on and they didn't line up particularly well. To me, they should just lay down over the fuselage the way it's provided. So I wasn't thrilled with that. So that's it. Uh, I'm very happy with the kit. The only thing I'm not thrilled with that has nothing to do with the kit is the paint. Uh, the, I, the Ohio Air Guard plane is supposed to be in FS36170, which is supposed to be some kind of, it's like a half glass gray, they call it in a lot of places. I can't find it anywhere. I guess people bought this shit up like it was, you know, going out of style. So highly recommended. Uh, if you want to build uh, an F-16 kit with uh, minimal fuss, this is the one to get. Uh, I'll tell you the truth, the next time I do one, I'll use a metal pitot tube. Uh, I'll get uh, Quinta instrument panels because th they'll be somewhat obvious. Um, you know, if you've got the extra cash to throw for it, I would recommend it. And I would definitely use aftermarket uh, AIM-9 missiles because I ain't using those kit ones again. They were awful. So find some in the spares box, use something else. But other than that, terrific kit. Um, so that's it. Thank you again to my channel members for uh, sponsoring this. They're the ones that, that funded this kit. So uh, thank you again, channel members. Thank you for stopping in. Uh, if you are a first time visitor here, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please give me a thumbs up feed the uh, YouTube algorithm, and I will see you guys next time for the next build. Take care, stay well.